Okay, we're back with the Fader Port 8, and the next thing that we're going to go through is the LCD display. And as you can see, it's very clear. Everything is legible. I'm actually sitting about two to three feet behind it without my glasses on, and I can read the LCD perfectly. To start with, uh, for the screen that you can see, you see that uh, on the very bottom is all of the pan positions and that's the larger bar that's there I'm going to hit this again because I'm going to show you what that does in a second so like if I select the Tom's track I can pan it left and right see how the bar works and actually if I have a track selected and I push the button it goes right to the center very very nice so now uh, but I don't want that actually I want that pan to the left okay so we have that so that's the control there the letter C and L in the middle reflects the position, center, left, right, and then the bar is the degree at which it's set. The number is the number of the track, so as I, if you remember in the last video, you hit bank and then you hit the arrows, you can pan through the tracks. Now, this is one of the things that I wanted to show you. Uh, there is another button towards the bottom here that I'll show you in a little bit that says all. And if I hit all, that lets the LCD display not only the tracks, but as I go a little bit forward or back this way, I should say this way, uh, there's one of my sub outs and there's my main out. And if you had any VST instrument, instrument outs, they would also show up there and so on and so forth. So the display is actually quite nice. And uh, as you can see, the tracks go up to whatever they are. I've had over 100 tracks opened up and I've been able to bank through 100 tracks. So it's very, very accurate in that aspect you know that it's pretty much i i don't know how far it'll go but i assume it'll go unlimited however many tracks you can get into studio one and have them play so uh so there's the sub outs there's that all, all controlled with a fader as you can see if i hit the fader it's actually going to reflect what i'm at i'm just touching it since these are touch sensitive faders so i can actually do that that's my sub out or one of my headphone outs <clears throat> there you go. So there you go. So you can actually see that work. So now I'm going to go back through the banking and I'm going to go to track one. And this is my kick track. And there is another cool thing that's interesting. If I hit play, oops, let me actually bring down my master volume here because this song is loud. I'm going to hit play. Okay. So you can actually see there's nothing going on here yet. However, if I hit the track button one more time, I actually get activity. Now I see VU meters, and I can even see the gate that I have on the snare. And, of course, that will change to a compressor, whichever the top effect is. You will actually see if it has any kind of graphic option to display, you'll actually see it there. So you can see when that gate's opening up right from that, right from that display right there. And that's very, very cool to be able to see all of that info. I'm going to go back to hit it again. I'm going to go back to normal, and there we go. So the, the, the display is very, very solid. It updates beautifully as you pan through the tracks. And if I actually hit the pan button, this is where you saw earlier, you saw you saw the faders actually assume the panning positions. Um, I have that now, and I, I'm going to do more on that as soon as I actually zoom out and I show the whole this part of the console right here. So, uh, so the uh, display updates perfectly when you hit pan, and then you go ahead and you hit track again, and then all the faders move back into place, just like that. Okay, so now there are some other things. I've gone through the uh, the track. I've gone through pan. And if I had any sends on this, oh, and I do, I have one. I didn't even realize I had that. So now the fader on this track is now controlling the level of that send. Isn't that nice? It makes a huge difference when you actually go into want to adjust tracks. And that send is the reverb that I have for all of the drums. So now if I select the different tracks, it changes to the amount and level of whatever selected track I have. I don't have a lot of send effects on this song, but as you saw, on the kick drum, I also have it going to a vocal verb 
just a little bit so that I can actually get a kind of a little taste on that. There you go. Very nice. So now I'm going to go back to track and display all that. Okay, so now here is the cool part. The edit plugins option. I'm going to hit edit plugins. Boom. And you can see that I have a selection of plugins that are on my snare track. Shows me the name of the track and it shows me the, uh, the plugins available on that track. So now if I hit one of these, let's go ahead with the compressor. Boom. There. Now you can see in Studio One, the compressor opens up and I have the options to do every anything I want with all of the available settings in the compressor. Here is the ratio setting. And here is the knee setting. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually moving the faders. Now you can't see that because I wanted you to get a shot of the actual screen. I'm moving the fader that's associated with that track right there. And then here is the attack setting for that compressor. And I can turn it off if I want. Or I can turn it on. So as you can see here in Studio One, it's changing between the side chaining. And now it's got side chaining. Same goes for our, our, our release. And of course, that doesn't have an on or off option because it's, it's always going to be there. Although I see right here that it's got a listen filter that actually turns on when you turn on that track. That's really interesting. Not sure what that does. I'm not familiar with that function of the compressor. So let's see. For this one, we have, and again, I'm moving the fader. That's okay, there's our input gain. And of course, there is no on or off option that's always on, so that button's not going to light up. But these are the effects that you can buy, or the parts of the effect that you can actually bypass, and the parts that you can't, or the parts that are off. There we go. So now what I can do, if I go to Edit Plugins, now I'm back to here, and then I can actually go through uh, my mix verb if I want to. And there we go. It shows up on the screen here in Studio One, and then I have all of my adjustments. I'm moving the faders. I have all of my adjustments available to me right there. It's very, very nice to be able to do that. So now I'm going to hit this again. So now, in order to get to the next track... Okay, I'm going to go to the section uh, right above the transport, the navigation section, and I'm going to go to, let's see, I believe it's channel, and now I'm going to go left or right, and you can actually see now, as I pan through the different tracks, I can actually get to all of their plugins and options. So again, in order to change the track that you're on, Hit the channel button in the navigation section, and then turn the wheel. And then if you want to know what track you're on, there you go. You can actually close that. So you can actually leave it like that. Let's see if I can turn the wheel. Oh, there we go. Hit that again. Okay, I moved over to the aco acoustic. And I'm going to pan over a couple other times, and there we go. I can edit to that. So you can see how useful this is being able to just use all of the controls on the FP8 to actually see all your different screen, screen displays. So there you go. There's Empire. I'm going to go back, and then I can scroll through my tracks and so on and so forth. So now I'm going to go back to the tracks, hit play, and we're all set. So... That is the display and all of the different options that you can see when you're actually editing your tracks and going through your edit modes. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.